Baseball season is underway throughout the European continent. All leagues kicked off their season sometime between late March and mid-April, so they've been going on for at least a few weeks now. And unlike in Asia and North America, they don't play over 100 games, so these games are really important. Postseason starts as early as this month for some leagues. If you watched the WBC back in March, you know that European baseball is getting a lot stronger. The Italian team reached the quarterfinals using a few players from the Italian league. The Dutch team won a couple games using several players from the Dutch league. And the Czech Republic qualified for the next WBC using a lineup almost entirely made up of players from the Czech League. And don't forget the Germans. They weren't in the WBC, but their league is on par with the Dutch, Italian, and Czech leagues. It's those four leagues I cover weekly on this channel. Every Monday I put up my World Baseball News video, and I briefly cover those four European leagues at the end of the video. So if you're not subscribed, do so now. Come back every Monday and stay up to date on the top European leagues all summer. You can find ex-major league players in these leagues, others who reach AA or AAA, and every year more and more players from the European leagues are being signed by major league organizations. Just last year, the MVP of the German league was signed by the Brewers. A pitcher from the Czech league was signed by the Diamondbacks, just to name a couple. From June 6th to the 10th in the Netherlands, two teams from the Dutch, German, and Czech leagues, and one team each from the Italian and French leagues, will battle in the European Champions Cup, held every year since 1963. A champion of all of Europe will be crowned in about five weeks, so get to know these teams before the tournament starts. Today I want to talk about the big four European leagues a little more in detail than I usually do, and also some of the other well-established leagues on the continent. A lot of countries over there and almost everyone has organized baseball. The best thing about European baseball is that most of the leagues stream their games live and free. Some have a streaming service, if not individual teams often have their own YouTube channels. I'll try to include as many of those as I can here today, and check the description for links to those sites. One of the big turnoffs to European baseball in past years was that almost every league was dominated by one or two teams. As soon as the season started, you were pretty sure who was going to win it, or at least who was going to be in the finals. But the last few years, we've seen the balance of power shift in some leagues. Now there's a big three or a big four, and in some leagues, we just don't know who the next great team is going to be. Alright, let's get started. Czech Baseball Extra Liga will end their regular season in just over a week, so I'll start there. That doesn't mean their whole season will end soon. The first phase of their postseason is a 16-15 game round robin, lasting nearly two months. Then the best four out of those six teams advance to the semifinals. And from there it's a regular best of five playoffs. Here's how they look right now. Rossi Berno was the Czech Series runner-up in 2022. In 2023 they lead the standings at 9-3. Eagles Praha 9-6, Trebek Nuclears 9-7, Sokol Thoboka 7-6. No one has clinched a spot in the postseason yet, but those four teams are in pretty good shape. Look at the runs scored versus runs allowed all the way to the right. Eagles Praha games get pretty wild. And here are the bottom four, teams that are getting a little nervous right now. Eros Ostrava were league champions two years ago. Last year they just barely made the postseason. This year they're hoping to sneak in once again. Drassi Berno are the reigning champions and have 23 overall league titles but they are off to their worst start in decades. Right now they are clinging to that sixth and final playoff spot. Tempo Praha and Technica Brno are in the last two spots. If the season were to end today, those two would enter a playoff with teams from the lower league, needing to win to avoid relegation and remain in extra liga. The season's not ending today, but a three game series this weekend, another one next weekend, a couple makeup games, and that's it. Time is running out. Best hitter in Extra Liga this year is once again Martin Cervanka. Last year he was the best hitter playing for Eagles Praha. This year he's playing for Tempo Praha. He's batting 500, 29 out of 58 at the plate. On base percentage 531, slugging 1.034, OPS 1.566, 7 home runs, 32 RBI. He leads the league in all those categories. Cervanka played at AAA Syracuse in the Mets organization two years ago and was the starting catcher for the Czech team in the WBC. ERA leaders Jeffrey Barto of Trebek Nuclears has a 0.45 ERA, 4 starts and only 1 run allowed in 20 innings with 20 strikeouts. Marek Minerik of Tempo Praha, a 120 ERA in 15 innings. Thomas Ondra of Rossi Brno has a 144 ERA in 25 innings with 32 strikeouts. Last weekend he threw a 2 hit shutout. Here's a look through some various stat leaders, hitting on the left, pitching on the right. I got all these from baseball-stat.cz. Go there for all extra Liga stats. You'll find a link to it in the description, as well as a link to Miluyame Baseball. Hope I'm saying that right, I've only seen it written. You can read articles there on Czech Baseball in English. There's also a link to Czech Baseball TV, the league's streaming service. Set up a free account, it only takes a minute, and watch the games live. 
There's also a link to the official Extraliga website, extraliga.baseball.cz, and links to three Twitter accounts I follow that cover Czech baseball. In June, the league will take a couple weeks off. Saturday, June 17th, will be the All-Star Game, played between the Czech national team and a team of Extraliga All-Stars, not on the national team. Then from June 21st to the 24th is Prague Baseball Week, an international tournament that takes place every year. Baseball Bundesliga in Germany is playing with 13 teams this year, down from 15 a year ago. They usually only play on Saturday and Sunday, just one two-game series every weekend, often played as a doubleheader. They're about halfway through their regular season schedule now. Two divisions in the Bundesliga, North and South, six teams in the North. The Bond Capitals are the defending champions, and they lead the North right now with a record of 7-3. They look nothing like they did a year ago, though. They finished last year with a record of 21-1 to finish the regular season. The Hamburg Steelers, a playoff team last year, is one game behind at 6-4. The Paderborn Untouchables, the runner-up in the championship series a year ago, are 4-4. Berlin Flamingos, 3-3. Doran Wild Farmers, a playoff team last year, 3-5. And And Cologne, 3-7. The top four teams from each division make the playoffs. North number one versus South number four. North number two versus South number three. You get the point. Right now it's a close race up and down in the North. Very different from last year. Any team could end up in the playoffs. Eric Brink of the Bond Capitals is the North leader in batting, 429, and on base percentage, 512, and second in stolen bases, a perfect 6 for 6. 42-year-old Yasutomo Kobo, who played in NPB from 2005 to 2017 of the Hamburg Steelers, leads the North in innings 42, strikeouts 43, and wins with a record of 4-1. South Division, on the other hand, has its clear winners and losers so far. The Heidenheim Heidekepf is 5-0. They were Bundesliga champions three years in a row from 2019 to 2021, but bowed out in the semis last year. Stuttgart is 5-1, Regensburg 6-2. Regensburg was undefeated until last weekend when they lost both games to Heidenheim. Regensburg and Heidenheim were 1-2 and two in the North standings last year. Stuttgart did not make the playoffs. Mainz, a playoff team in 2022, is 4-2. Hunstetten, a new team, is 4-6. The Munich Har Disciples were a playoff team last year, but they are not looking good this year. Two wins, eight losses. Mannheim is last at 1-8. Seven teams in this division, so every week one team is off. Justin Bird of Hunstetten leads the South in stolen bases with 7, and OPS 1217. His line is 393, 538, 679. He was a good hitter in Mexico last summer. Steven Norell of the Munich Har Disciples leads the South in innings 31, and strikeouts 27. ERA is 259, but his record is 1 3. He just graduated from college in Ottawa last year, and this is his first pro assignment. Official website is baseball bundesliga.de. It's a pretty good site. You can check all the results, standings, schedule, and stats. All in German, but it's easy to figure out. The Munich Har Disciples stream their games on YouTube with English commentary. I'll include the link for that and the channels for Regensburg and Bonn. Both good channels. Other teams may have channels too. Just search for any team you'd like to see. Italian Baseball League, the largest of all European leagues. Up until a few years ago, the league had between 7 and 10 teams at the top level annually. Then, a couple years ago, they decided to expand to 30 and divide them into groups. This year, they've got five groups, each with six teams. You see some really lopsided results with each group having one or two dominant teams. But the scores are a lot closer this year than they were last year, and we're seeing some upsets of those top teams. So the competition is getting better. They're about halfway through that first round now. Once that's over, the top two teams from each group move on to the first round of the postseason. Last year, they were divided into two groups and played a round-robin of 30 games, which is longer than the regular season. Top two teams from each group moved on to the best-of-seven semifinals. Winners of that move on to the best-of-seven Italian series. San Marino, a country of just 30,000 people, is the two-time defending Italian series champion. So the Italian champion isn't even Italian. They lead Group A with a record of 6-0, tied with Maserata. Those two will be meeting next weekend for a pair of games, with the Group A title on the line. Parma lost the Italian series in seven games to San Marino last year, but they won their second consecutive European Cup. They've won the Cup 15 times, more than any other team. They've won the Italian series 10 times, but not since 2010. They are 6-0 right now. They already beat the number two team, Ronchi, twice last weekend. Third place, Coleccio, was a playoff team last year, and they'll be playing Ronchi this weekend, and that'll likely determine the second postseason spot out of this group. Group C, Unipolsai Fortitudo Bologna leads at 5-1. They were league champions three years in a row from 2018 to 2020. 
Two years ago, they lost in the Italian series. Last year, they lost in the semifinals to Parma. They were upset last weekend by fifth place Sieme. Orta di Godo Knights are second with a record of 4-2. and two. Those two losses were against Bologna. They were a playoff team last year and probably will be again this year. Group D, BSC Grosseto, not a playoff team last year, is the leader at 4-0. Nettuno has 17 Italian series titles, the most of any team, but has not won it since 2001. And last year they didn't even make it to the quarterfinals. Last weekend they were upset by 4th place Crosetta. BBC Grosseto was a playoff team a year ago. They are 3-2 now. Both losses were to BSC Grosseto. BBC and Nettuno are playing this weekend. Group E, Modena is 5-1, Torino 4-2. Those two split a two-game series last weekend. Torino was a postseason team last year. Modena just missed it. FIBS TV is where you can watch Italian League games, but not too many games are streamed there. Highlights are on the FIBS YouTube channel, and the go-to site is FIBS.it. I don't rate it as a very good site though, I couldn't even get player stats for this season there. Honkball Hooft Class in the Netherlands, now over 100 years old. They're halfway through the regular season there. After that, the top four move on to the 18-game round-robin winner's stage. The bottom five play in the loser's stage, where they can work their way back to the winner's group. Semi-finals are best of five. Holland Series is best of seven. For nine years, from 2013 to 2021, the Holland Series featured the same two teams, Neptunus and Amsterdam, year after year. It was getting really boring, but last year, HCAW broke it up. They finished second in the regular season standings beat Amsterdam three games to one in the semis, then swept Neptunus for the championship. That's Curacao Neptunus of Rotterdam at the top. 12 wins, no losses, and one tie. HCAW is next at 9-1. That one loss came to Neptunus the other day. That was game one of a three-game series that will continue this weekend. L&D Amsterdam Pirates are 8-4. They have yet to play Neptunus. They were swept by HCAW on opening weekend and lost once to Oosterhout Twins. Twins are there in 4th at 4-4-1. They lost twice to Amsterdam and twice to Neptunus. Last weekend they tied Neptunus. Those are the big four teams in the hoof class right now. They were the four semifinalists last year, and probably will be this year. The bottom five are Hoofdorp Pioneers, RCH Penguins, Quick Amersfoort, UVV, a new team at the hoof class level this year. They replaced Silicon Storks, the last place team from a year ago. DSS Kinheim is last at 2-7. Outfielder Denzel Richardson of Amsterdam is the two-time reigning MVP, and he's having another fantastic season. Lars Hoyer of HCAW was the best pitcher and a big reason for their run to the title last year. Former Major League pitcher Sharon Martiz played for Amsterdam last year. This year he's playing for Neptunus. Stats are hard to find on this league. There is a site for Dutch baseball, honkballsoftball.nl, but it's all just articles in Dutch. A good site to read daily recaps and news in English about the Hooft class, as well as the Belgian League, check out Dutch Baseball Hangout. The KNBSB YouTube channel will occasionally stream games. If you want to see all the games, go to Honkball Softball TV and set up an account. The next league we've got to look at is the French League, Division 1, because this league will be sending a team to the European Cup to compete with seven teams from the leagues we've already talked about. The Ruin Huskies are that team. They earned a promotion by winning last year's Confederation Cup. The Huskies have won the French title seven years in a row, one of the most dominant teams in European baseball. However, last year at 12-4, they did not have the best record in their division, but they played the best in the playoffs and won another title. Look at this year's standings, though. At 5-5, five five, they've already lost more games than they did last year, and they're in danger of missing the playoffs. Only the top two teams from each division qualify for the semifinal round. This is Group A and it's being led by Stade Toulousain at 8-2. Group B, Montpellier is a perfect 8-0 with 8 games remaining. Zavigny is 5-1, holding the other spot for now. Huskies TV is a good channel to watch the French League. All the Ruin Huskies games are there. The Spanish Baseball League is 10 games into a 26-game schedule, so almost halfway. The last 10 league titles have been won by either Tenerife Marlins or Astros Valencia. Marlins won the last two, beating Astros in the final series both times. That may not change this year. As you can see, Tenerife and Valencia are both 9-1. But there's another 9-1 team, Valadikins, hoping to shake things up a bit. 11 teams are competing this year. Four will qualify for the playoffs. The top four teams you see here were the same four who made the playoffs last year. Sant Boy did stream their games on YouTube in past years, but they haven't put up anything this year, and neither have any other teams. 
They are also playing ball in Britain, Belgium, Switzerland, Sweden, Lithuania, and just about every country in Europe. But of course, there's no way to watch the games and information on them is limited. The best place to go for information is Mr. Baseball. It covers all the baseball leagues on the continent. If you just want to check scores, standings, and schedule, FlashScore.com gives live updated scores on most of the European leagues, as well as all the major professional leagues of the world. If you live in one of these countries and you follow baseball there, you probably know more about it than I do. So leave a comment with any information you've got. Everyone here will be glad to see it. Anyway, that's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!